Many times I have seen that people create and use some of the different services on the cloud without knowing some of the best practices of using those services. What should be the configuration they should be providing for their customer when they are they are using the services? What should be the security consideration they should use while exposing the services on the public internet? These are the things you should be always keeping this in mind uh, while choosing any of these services. Today in this session, we are going to discuss what are the different security aspect you should be considering when choosing the API management as a service. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rakesh Suryanshi and to, uh, today we are going to look at how do you configure your API management to make your project secure and safe. Many times when you create the API management, it asks you for the certain parameters. For example, do you want to host the API management on the public internet or you want to make it private? Because if you want to make it private, then it will not be exposable to the web application or to your front facing application who is going to make a call to your APIs. Then how do you make use of those kind of configurations? What are the best practices? So when you create the API management, API management itself is not only a service, but it has an entire product in itself. For example, it, it will give you a developer portal as an UI, wherein you can browse your APIs, products, users, subscribe to a product, test your APIs and all those things which you can do with your APIs. So, API management itself has their own MySQL database, SQL server and, and other stuff in place which gives combined together it gives all the details available for you. Now before you create the API management first thing you should do is by default the networking configuration remains none this means that your API management will be accessible over the internet. So you should be asking a question to yourself, do you really want to expose your API management over the internet? Because if it is so, then your developer portal of your API management, your APIs which is hosted underneath the API management is going to be exposed over the internet. So anybody can go and browse to the URL and expose and use the APIs which is going to be a business critical APIs. So do you really want to do that? If not, then what option you should use? Should you use the internal API? If you are going to use the internal API, it means what you are saying is my API is going to be bound to communicate within this virtual network boundaries. It means that the API management will not be available over the internet. If that's the case, then any web application, let's say a front-end web application wants to make a call to the API, then how the front-end web application is going to interact to my API if the API is only bound to a particular virtual network. So again, you should be asking this question as well, right? In my opinion, if you are building a business critical application and if your goal is to make your APIs or the backend APIs safe and secure, you should always go and configure your virtual uh, your API behind the virtual network and whoever is making a call or utilizing your APIs over the internet such as a web application, they should come via the application gateway. So any call should make any call to your API should route from your from your public internet should route to application gateway and then application gateway should make a call to the API management. That's how the, the entire configuration should remain to. I'll show you in the demonstration how you can do that. So that's the first thing to be considered virtual network configuration for your API management, right? This is what you need to remember. Number one, now once you have the API management configured, next thing you should do is how do you design your products? Obviously you host the APIs on here, like right now my uh, API management has got only one API, which is a default Echo API hosted. 
and then I have the default products which is starter and limited product and this product has got uh, exposed to the administrator developer and guest all three user groups so administrator who is manages the API management and developer who deploys the APIs onto the API management and guest is the any user who is going to log into the API management portal so I'll show you what do I mean by the guest user so if I go back to the API management portal I can I have an option to sign up so I as an anonymous user I can sign up to the product uh, I can sign up to the API management and then once I sign up it sign up here I can go to the basically sign in let me go and sign into the product I have already signed up for this demonstration so you go to the products you have all this access to all your products you can go and check the metadata you can subscribe to a product let me go and subscribe it quickly I've subscribed it I'll go to the API search for the operations and then from here you can see that you with the help of this subscription and product I am able to test the API and browse the input and output types and then I'm able to fetch the backend data as well and you can see that I got the response and that's working fine so that's the that's how you can use the developer portal and as an anonymous user I am able to subscribe it I'm able to uh, to play around with any API which could be a business critical application so you should be asking question do you really want to expose your APIs in a way that anybody any anonymous user can come into the picture and then they can host your or subscribe to your APIs and play around with the in in the, in the nine out of ten times I would say they are the client will say no we don't want this thing to be happen so how do you do that how do you manage the restriction and the security for your apis and the products so if you go to the products you create a new products let's say i'm going to create a demo product i'll provide a description if you look at that uh, product has multiple options one is publish i'm going to publish the product where at the time of creating the product you can create publish it later on as well and next option is require subscription so this product whatever number of apis this product will have or anybody who is willing to use those apis they need to go for the subscription process so they will require a subscription in order to use those apis so by having this checkbox in place you need to have a subscription in place next for the security purpose you should have this checkbox in place which is not the case in by default you should always say that my product requires an approval so any subscription like I did a subscription just now and my portal demonstration which was subscribed by default but ideally you should have a checkbox check so anybody who is subscribing to your demo product your administrator will get an email that so and so person has subscribed to the product do you really want to give and subscription key to them if they say okay yes go ahead and give the subscription key then you would your subscription will become active and you should be able to use it if they decline it if you are a suspicious user then they might decline the subscription and then in that case you would not be able to use it so that is again a security thing which you should be considering next is about the subscription limit so uh, it might possible you would like to limit your number of subscription per user so if you want to do that you can do and provide a limit specify a limit for your subscription for example like this so now i have a demo subscription and inside the demo subscription i can have my api so let me add a echo test apis here so if i go back to the de demo portal developer portal now then I would go to the products 
I'll browse the products. So let me see if the product has been published. Yeah, you can see that the uh, product is currently only exposed to the administrator and I am not logged in as an administrator and that's the reason I am not able to browse the uh, view this particular product. So let's say I would like to expose this product to, to the group. So for now this example I am going to say okay I would like to expose to these product this product to the guest user as well in ideal case it should not be and if I am going to do so I have the demo product okay once you have the product available even though uh, it is exposed to the guest user I would not be able to use the API because I don't have any subscription and if I am going to say okay subscribe to the product I would be getting an email created uh, raised with the subscription you you can see that the earlier subscription which i did at that point of time the subscription was automatically active but at this time the subscription is not activated or by default because it remains in submitted state because now this product is requires approval from the administrator and if i go back to the subscription request i'll see and the two different subscription requests one is the subscription request which i have created earlier with the same user which was activated and this particular subscription request is become submitted state so it is waiting for approval from the owner so owner can uh, now owner might have received the email and then they can subscribe it so whenever a new register user comes into picture they they comes as a developer here okay this is what it is uh, for the the second things which you should be considering it next is you might want to you know and your api management uh, you you might want to expose your api management to let's say i have a different api management as well so if i go back to this api management currently whenever you have the api management or like other services in azure they have their own domain name for example for api management you have a domain called azure-api.net so this is your domain uh, domain for api management and any name of your api management which you give this becomes your subdomain which is api-99-1 dot uh, developer dot azure website dot net but obviously that's not the name which you would like to prefer for your apis uh, so what you want to do is you want to do uh, the custom domain configuration that is something which we are going to look at in our next demonstration i hope these security considerations are helpful while designing the api management for your use case if you like the video and the content please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share with your friends thanks for watching it